What's going on everybody? Hey, about four years ago, I made a video called Cleaning Your Reloading Brass Without a Tumbler. And honestly, it's been one of my biggest videos. Uh, in terms of views, it's in my top three right now. Uh, in fact, if you're subscribed, there's a good chance you subscribe because of that video. One of the real ironies of that video is that um, about the time that video took off in the algorithm, I actually changed the formula for my mix for how I clean my brass. I'm gonna show you my new formula coming up a modern mountain man. Well, first of all, I want to address uh, why I'm not using the former formula anymore. I really like that formula for a few reasons. It was cheap, it was easy, and it was effective. It really did, did a good job of cleaning the brass. Uh, the one thing I did not like about that particular formula was that uh, because of the vinegar element of that mixture, um, you, you you were stuck to like, you gotta get it in and out of the solution under a certain amount of time. You can't let it just bathe in there and soak for days and days. Otherwise, it's gonna begin to um, leach all of the zinc out of the brass and begin to get sort of a purple hue to it. So my new formula that I've been using uh, is big shout out to our uh, dearly departed C-Max. This was a formula that I found on his channel. Um, but it's really, really, really simple. It really has three ingredients. You get some uh, dish detergent like Dawn. I got some uh, Dawn Ultra Platinum, so some really intense Dawn. You get some lemon juice, the cheaper, the better, and hot water. Other than that, just need some brass. Right now, I've got a, uh, a pretzel jar full of brass. This is primarily 223, but I've got some 45 Colt in here, I've got some 50 Beowulf, and I've got some 375 Stalker. Now this thing is just absolutely packed, so I'm gonna take an empty pretzel jar and make two half pretzel jars. All right, for those of you who really like formulas, here's the formula. I'm gonna tell you that you're gonna want about a tablespoon of each of these active ingredients for every quart of water you use. I'm not measuring today, today I'm just eyeballing. Now I'm sure somebody in the comment section is gonna correct me on, that didn't look like a tablespoon, or that look, chill Karen. With the hot water element, we're, gonna, we're not gonna fill the whole jar, we're just gonna fill it till we're just slightly covering the brass. And the reason why we filled it only up to the brass line, two things, we don't want to dilute our solution, but so much too, you wanna to leave room for agitation. Lids back on. Got lid on. Give it, a little ag give it a little agitation. We're gonna leave that for 24 hours. We'll be right back. All right. So more than 24 hours has rolled by since that last clip. Um, <clears throat> which is okay because I'm not using the vinegar formula. So what happened was I got busy the next day, a few weeks roll by. This stuff has, look, look, look at all that cloudiness there from where it's been cleaning the brass. So this brass is gonna be extra clean because it's been a couple weeks. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this upstairs to the industrial sink. Uh, I'm gonna take this strainer as well as a few things to put the strained brass in after we strain it. One thing I will say, is don't use this for your spaghetti noodles though, uh, because after you strain your brass, you'll have all kinds of chemicals such as old powders and various other things like that that are in there, lead, uh, things you don't want to feed your kids. S same with uh, the toaster oven that I use to quick dry the brass. That's only for brass, it's for tempering some knife making metals. But other than that, 
Everything you see me using to clean the brass, I will not use for anything other than that purpose. Let's go upstairs. Also, for sake of reference from the last video, a bunch of you guys were worried about the brass going down the drain. Check it out. That little cross hatch caught it all. No brass left behind. So we got the strainer positioned here in the industrial sink. We're going to start dumping some of the fluid on the outside of it here. So we don't have to, in case there's anything in there that's just, we don't need to rewash something. There we go. Got most of the fluid out. Let's just go ahead and dump the, the brass into the strainer. Just gonna rinse this out real quick. So I'm gonna transport the brass back down to the workshop in the same container. Repeat the process with the second group. Pour out as much of this fluid as we can before we dump it. Good night, shiny brass. Let's take this back downstairs and polish back in the basement. All right, so what we're gonna do now is the brass is gonna come out of this container. I've got this rag that will only ever be used for buffing brass. So once again, this is not gonna be for kitchen use or bathroom use or anything else. And then as I, I buff them, it gives me opportunity if there's any like just stuck on corrosion just to get it off of there, but also gives me an opportunity to inspect the brass. I put it on this baking sheet, once again, only will ever be used for, for shop uses, not for food uses. Put it in the toaster oven at a very low setting so we're not warping the brass. Have it at a low setting, cook it for about an hour, and then it's dry, ready to use again. I'm not sure how, how well the camera's picking this up, but this, this brass looks practically new. Now, in projects like this where it's going to take a while to buff individual pieces, you know, it's sort of a monotonous job, great opportunity to listen to a podcast, watch YouTube videos, um, listen to, I, I like to listen to the Bible on you version, uh, wh whatever, whatever just you want to do to do a monotonous job you got to get done while relaxing and learning and do something at the same time. In fact, here's a perfect example of why you inspect each one of these individually. I've got a piece of 50 Beowulf brass. Now I've got two different types of Beowulf brass. I've got Starline brass and I've got some Alexander Arms brass. I've got another video, I'll link it up there, that where I talk about why the Starline brass is superior to the brass that Alexander Arms currently uses. They used to use Starline brass, now they use a different brand uh, that was cheaper, I guess. Um, but there's some Alexander Arms brass. I'm gonna see whether the camera can pick this up or not. There's a huge crack right here. So I'm glad that I buffed these individually and didn't just reload them unsuspectingly because this would probably uh, not end really well with this massive crack in it. So going to the trash. All right, and the first batch is done. Some fresh, fresh baked brass. Some 50 Beowulf that got done. Starline 45 Colt 223 over here. Now separate them all and do the next batch. Mm -hmm. 